Now that the MacBook Air and the iPad Pro are out, I couldn't help but look at Apple's announcement and think, Apple doesn't want you to buy the MacBook Air. That may sound insane, but I promise you it'll make a lot of sense. So let's jump into it right after this. Hey friends, this is Brian here with This Is Tech Today, your source for honest tech reviews, the news, and my views, and you're watching Talking Points, my views on the state of tech today. Make sure to share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to be notified of when I post a new video. Of course, all products talked about in this video will be linked down below in the description, and anything purchased through that helps support the channel. When we look at the launch event from this past October, it can be really easy just to watch the Apple event and miss what Apple is actually telling. Us. If you look back on it, it'll tell you a lot about how they view their products and what they actually want you to buy. I couldn't help but look at how they talked about the MacBook Air first and boasted about how amazing their Touch ID fingerprint sensor was and how much that T2 security chip was a part of it. They even said it was the most secure boot process of any notebook out there. And then at the end of the event, announced the iPad Pro with Face ID and say that it's more secure than any other tablet or computer. That seems a bit like a contradiction, right? Then you can look at the obvious and look at the order of the event. Of course, their biggest announcement will be at the end it was the iPad Pro. But there's something else that wasn't so obvious. When you look at the total time spent on each product, the MacBook Air received a total of 16 minutes of talking time. The iPad Pro received a whopping 34 minutes of talking time. I think we can tell which child is the favorite here and I don't think they want you to buy the MacBook Air. And beyond the event itself, you can look at the updates that the MacBook Air and the iPad Pro received. The MacBook Air finally received that long overdue retina display, Touch ID, the standard spec bumps, better speakers, the Force trackpad. It's also smaller. It just kind of seems like catching up with the rest of the lineup, right? At least the branding and marketing is on point. I love it. Then you look at the iPad Pro and we got a dramatic new redesign with slim bezels and that awesome liquid retina display. That display has ProMotion technology technology for those high refresh rates and has a brightness of 600 nits compared to the MacBook Air's 400 nits. It also has Face ID and has those great cameras and a lot of the software you can find on the iPhone. You can uh, even use Animoji on your iPad Pro for some reason. I mean, you can't even do that on your Mac. It has a newly redesigned Apple Pencil that is designed way better than the last one. The old one was precariously sticking out there so much you could use it as a weapon to take <gasps> out vampires. And then there's a 7 nanometer A12X Bionic chip. It's an absolute beast of a processor. It's honestly insane. The graphics are so good, it's as powerful as an Xbox S and supports augmented reality. Oh, and um, the speakers are great. Huh, one of these seems like a standard spec bump while the other seems like a rocket into the future of tablet devices. All the amazing features and the spec bumps landed on the iPad Pro, not the MacBook Air. Can you see where I'm heading with this? I think they want you to buy the iPad Pro. The other part that shows that they don't want you to buy the MacBook Air? Price. The MacBook Air starts at a price of $1,200. That's $400 more than the 11 inch iPad Pro and $200 more than the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. That's a big gap. But let's look at what's above it. The 12 inch MacBook is only $100 more than the MacBook Air. In weight, the base model MacBook Pro is also only $100 more than the MacBook Air. Sure, we could talk about why the 12 inch MacBook exists Exist, but that's not this video. The point is, the MacBook Pro is only $100 more than the MacBook Air. I think this shows that Apple actually doesn't want you to buy the MacBook Air. And to explain this, I'm going to use the example of french fries. Yes, french fries, those crunchy sticks of pure delight. Speaking of french fries, uh, be right back. All right, thanks for waiting. So french fries, right? You've totally been in this situation before. You're at a fast food restaurant, you're trying to buy some french fries, they're $1.60 each, and then you see that the super size is just 40 cents more. And then you think, man, I don't need a super size, but it is only 40 cents more. That is quite tempting though, isn't it? And then you think, eh, it's only 40 cents more, why not? My friend, you were just upsold based upon price. It's delicious though. See, this is a very intentional way of psychological marketing called comparative pricing. You're forced to make the decision and you're strongly encouraged to go to the higher priced option because you get more product at a greater value. I mean, look at the storage options for the iPad Pro. For $50 more, I can get a 256 gigabyte version instead of 64 gigabytes. It's a total no brainer. I'm totally paying for that upgrade. Well, when we look at the MacBook Air, we can see this. We look above it and for only $100 more, which honestly isn't that much when you're buying a whole computer and it's up in that price range, it's just really tempting to just go with a MacBook Pro. I mean, it has higher specs, right? It's so close. Now the opposite is true if you look below the MacBook Air and look at the iPad 
iPad Pro. The gap is either $400 or $200 if we're looking at base models. It causes you to think, wow, I could save that much money if I just went with the iPad Pro instead? Or you're looking at the iPad Pro and you're considering the MacBook Air and then you think, whoa, there is no way I'm spending $400 more for a MacBook Air. That's way too much money. So beyond increasing the prices in their entire lineup to please investors, Apple's pretty smart. They know what they're doing. Both you and I are very conscious about how we spend our hard-earned money. We're going to think about these things. And with the holiday season coming up, you have to find ways to save money. And I found a clever way to do just that with a virtual private network by this video sponsor, NordVPN. You may have some flights, hotels, and car rentals coming up. Well, a crazy trick to get a better deal is with a virtual private network that allows you to look like you're located in a different country. Surprisingly, travel companies price tickets differently depending on where you're located. If you're using a VPN, you could save hundreds of dollars on just one trip for yourself or way more if you're flying your whole family. That easily pays for the cost of NordVPN and then some. If you sign up with the link in the description and use promo code TECHTODAY, you can get 75% off your subscription. If you sign up this month, it's only $2.99 a month. That's less than a cup of coffee. And with my promo code, you'll get a free month on top of that. Seriously, this is a great deal that pays itself off super easy. You can sign up and find instructions for this travel hack in the description. Thank you so much NordVPN for supporting our community and if you want to support this channel, please sign up. I'd really appreciate that. So when you combine all those different things, the announcement, the features, the prices, it seems like Apple created the MacBook Air because it was just long overdue. There was so much demand for it, and rightfully so. It has an amazing design. It was a great laptop, and it had one of the most memorable reveals in tech history. But it just feels like everything that Apple is doing is just telling you, yes, thank you so much for looking at our MacBook Air, but have you considered our Pro model? It's just a little bit more, and it's our Pro model. Or have you seen our iPad Pros? It has the latest, most groundbreaking tech, and it's blazing fast and way cheaper. Apple seems to be telling us, if you want that form factor and you want that nostalgia, you're gonna have to pay for it. But we think the iPad Pro is a replacement for your computer, so this is what we really want you to get. I mean, they actually say that on their website. They have an entire page dedicated to that message. And this is what Apple has been trying to do for many generations, make the iPad a replacement for your computer. But as many of us have said, iOS limits you on what you can do with it, unlike an actual computer. And those limitations are honestly what bugs me about iOS. And those limitations are what's preventing it from being a computer replacement. So while this may be what Apple's trying to do, I'm not quite sure it's working. So that brings me back to the MacBook Air. Maybe it makes sense if you need it for school, work, or you need that portability. For me, I would much rather have a MacBook Pro and an iPad Pro because they inherently do different things very well. And they're both amazing for creating in their unique ways. I just don't find the MacBook Air all that appealing when I look at all the options. And maybe that's exactly what Apple wants. Now you've bought not just one device, you've bought two. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. You know how to do that. And make sure you join the This Is Tech Today Discord community. There's a link down below in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please share it. I love creating discussion. And I'd love to have you here more often. So subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of when I post a new video. And links are in the description for all the goods. Thank you for watching This Is Tech Today. You just watched Talking Points. Until next time.